I know that a lot of you out there might be in a position where you're going to need to start to teach lessons remotely. Of course, it's important to learn about different tech programs that will facilitate distance learning, but I wanted to start with teaching you how to make a hyperdoc because I think that a hyperdoc can be the centerpiece for how you approach remote teaching. Even if you don't end up teaching remotely, adding a Google Slides hyperdoc to your toolkit as a teacher is one of the best ways to create an authentic, self-directed learning experience for students. My name is Sam Carey, and this is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom. On this channel, I share tips and tricks for how to use education technology to personalize learning, increase engagement, promote creativity, as well as teach your students 21st century skills. If you find the tips that I share in this video helpful, please share it with your teacher friends, hit the like button, and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly updates. In this video, I'm going to show you a Google Slides hyperdoc that I recently created for my students. I'm going to put it up on my website at www.newedtechclassroom.com. You're welcome to download it and edit it as you need to use it for your own classroom. First of all, a hyperdoc is basically a document that includes links to additional websites, instructions, or resources for students. A well-crafted hyperdoc, however, is much more than just a series of links. An effectively constructed hyperdoc is essentially a self-contained independent study that students can work through at their own pace. Google Slides is my preferred medium for creating a hyperdoc because it allows you to embed all different types of multimedia. So let's jump in and take a look at a hyperdoc that I recently created for my students. As you're going to see when I walk you through this hyperdoc, you can make this assignment as high tech or low tech as you want. At bare minimum, you're going to want to post this slide deck to Google Classroom, post it on another digital classroom platform, or email it out to your students. And if you want to embed all sorts of different tech programs into your hyperdoc, you can definitely do that. In this hyperdoc, I am going to link to some external tech programs, the majority of which you can access for free. You can see here that I have started the hyperdoc with a title and an image to make it clear to my students what we're going to be working on. I'm always going to start my hyperdoc with all the different learning targets that are going to be touched on. And you're going to notice that throughout the slides presentation, I'm going to include the different learning targets on individual slides to remind students of the specific skill that they're working on at that time. In the next slide, I will point my students to our essential question. In this case, was Emperor Chin an effective leader? And now you're going to see that I'm going to start to follow the five E's lesson plan. If you want to explore a little bit more about the five E's, you can check out my other video on lesson planning with Google Slides or just Google five E's lesson plan to see the different types of activities that you would do for each of the E's. The first E is to engage students. So here I'm going to draw on their background knowledge and I'm going to ask them to think about what they already know about the word controversy as well as what controversies they already know about themselves. You'll notice that I've included a link for students to click on so they can post their answer on a class Padlet. When they click on that link, you'll see that it directs them to a bulletin board where they are able to post their answer to the question that I posed. Using a bulletin board when remote teaching is a great way to have students feel like they're still engaged with their classmates because they'll be able to comment on each other's posts if you choose that option. So you can see here what a classroom bulletin board on Padlet would look like after students have posted a bunch of different responses. Another great thing about using this bulletin board on Padlet is that you as the teacher can also monitor what students are posting and you can also respond to what they're posting in order to stay engaged with your class and provide them with some quick feedback. After students have tapped their background knowledge and posted to Padlet, they're going to start to explore the content. Here on the first link, you can see that I've pre-created a note taker on Google Docs that they're going to use when they're doing their research about Emperor Chin's accomplishments. Next, you'll see that I've included several different links that will take my students to additional resources where they're going to go learn more about Emperor Chin and then take notes in their note taker. The first link is going to take students to a Newzella article. And if you have a school account with Newzella, it's going to auto differentiate that article to be exactly at my students' reading level. 
even if you don't have access to a pro Newsella account, students can still read a bunch of the articles on Newsella for free. Next, you'll see that I've linked to a couple different YouTube videos that my students can also use to learn about Emperor Chen. This second video is from TED-Ed. They're a great resource for reliable education videos. And of course, they're posted on YouTube for free. Lastly, you'll see that I've included a hyperlink to an external slide deck with additional reading. All I did here was take screenshots of my text and then drop it into a Google Slides presentation for them to be able to read. For the explain phase, students are now going to process the information that they just gathered to make a claim about whether or not they think Emperor Chin was an effective ruler. Here, I pre-created a Google Doc and then hyperlinked it into my Google Slides so that students can start to outline their thinking. On this Google Doc, I have some more specific instructions for this segment of the assignment, and I provided my students with some sentence frames to help them get started. In this part of the lesson, students will be introduced to a new skill in order to extend their thinking. Here I've chosen to include a hyperlink to an ed puzzle that another teacher already created to teach students about counterclaims and rebuttals. Ed puzzle has a lot of pre-created content and the great thing about ed puzzle is that you can create your own custom questions to a video that students have to answer in order to progress through the video lesson. Of course, there are other options you could use to teach a mini lesson here. You could use Screencastify to make your own video tutorial. You could arrange a Google Hangouts with your students, or it might be appropriate to link to a program like Khan Academy or Freckle in order to teach your students about a particular skill. After students learn about counter arguments, they're going to reopen the graphic organizer that they already started to work on, and they're going to reflect on what they learned in the video as well as start to prepare their own counterclaims and rebuttals in preparation for the debate. In the evaluate step of the lesson, students are going to post their response to Google Classroom and then use the same graphic organizer in order to review and paraphrase their peers' responses and then use counterclaims and rebuttals that they will post as a comment on their peers' responses. You'll see that I've also included some sentence starters to help my students out if they're having trouble getting started. I mentioned Google Classroom in this video because I think it's a really easy way to have a classroom debate. Another great resource for having an online debate with your students that's also free is a program called Kialo. I'm not going to go over how to use Kialo in this video, but if you're interested in using a different tool than Google Classroom to have students have a structured debate around a topic, I definitely recommend that you check out Kialo. For the final part of this assignment, I'm going to have students extend their learning by creating either a propaganda poster in support of Emperor Chen or a wanted poster against Emperor Chen. In this case, I'll give students the option to either hand draw the poster or create a graphic using Adobe Spark. I'm planning to make another video solely dedicated to using Adobe Spark, but the point here is that you can integrate a creativity app in order to extend your students' thinking. You could have students process what they've learned by having students use a variety of different creativity apps like Storyboard That, WeVideo, they could create a digital book or their own Google Slides presentation. There are tons of different options that you could use to have students end this project by making a creative piece that showcases their learning. The benefit of creating the HyperDoc is that students can work on it independently at their own pace, and you can embed as many other activities and tech programs as you want to make the project whatever you can imagine it to be. If you're looking for some additional inspiration or even just free HyperDoc that you can download and modify yourself, I also recommend that you check out the HyperDocs website. There you'll see under the resources tab, that you have access to file folders full of hyperdocs that have already been created about a ton of different topics. You may have to modify them slightly to fit your needs, but already having a template with a bunch of different ideas is a great place to start when you're creating your own remote learning lessons. In my upcoming videos, I'm planning to show you how to use some other great remote learning tools like Flipgrid and Google Hangouts. If you have any questions about how I'm preparing for remote learning, or if you have any ideas yourself about best instructional practices for teaching your students from a distance, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you find yourself in the position of needing to create independent study projects for your students, 
that are still engaging and rigorous. And even if you're not doing remote learning, I recommend you just try using a hyperdoc in your classes at some point. Students really enjoy it and it opens up your time to be able to circulate and support students as well as pull students into small groups. Thanks so much for watching my video to the end. If you appreciated the tips that I shared, please share it with other teachers that you know. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly video updates. Thanks so much and have a great week.